The public must not feel that laws don't exist. They do exist. There are ways of doing this. There are mechanisms now to ban the march. So the legal power to stop a protest, and in fact to block it for up to three months, already exists. It's in an Act of Parliament called the 1986 Public Order Act. It's in Section 13. The application is made by the Commissioner for the Met, and then the Home Secretary has a look at that application and considers it, and we can ban things. And one of the most important things at the moment, particularly when there is a sense of lawlessness, and we indeed we are seeing lawless behaviour, that, that's, that's an accurate way to describe what we are seeing, is that the public must not feel that laws don't exist. They do exist. There are ways of doing this. There are mechanisms now to ban the march. Because of the way Parliament works, Parliament, think of it like a giant forge, and it can, it can make any new law it wants, and it can destroy or change or reshape any existing law. And that great tool that is Parliament is, is in the hands really of the government and of the Prime Minister. So if the Home Secretary and the Prime Minister want to change the law, the, the existing 1986 Public Order Act, they can do that. And there is time, there, there, you know, it's actually, although we are accustomed now to a legislative process that is incredibly slow, again, because of the brilliant way that Parliament works, it can actually work incredibly quickly when it needs to. And at times it has done so. And it can either, it can, it can get through legislative change if it wants to. It can either amend the 1986 Act to say, oh, actually it won't be the Commissioner for the Met, it'll be the Home Secretary. And the Home Secretary will make that decision. Or it could say, change it to say the Prime Minister will make this decision. It, or it could just completely remove the 1986 Act or, and institute a new brand new power that would that would block this protest. And it's really, really important that the public know that the law is not there to stop things they want happening. If the public want to ban this march, and I, I, I think it's again, it's incumbent on me as an expert to not take a position on that. I'm not I, I'm not calling for this march to be blocked. Um, and I, I won't do, and I, I'm not calling for the march to go ahead because either is, is a position and I'm not taking either position, but I want the public to know that if they want this march blocked, this march can be blocked and there is plenty of time to do it. If the Metropolitan Police Commissioner wants to ban it, then he starts the process that exists already under the Public Order Act. He starts that ball rolling. If the mayor, Sadiq Khan, wants to block the march, then he tells the commissioner, I am your police and crime commissioner, please start the process under the 1986 Act. If Suella Braverman and the prime minister want to take action to block the march, firstly, as Home Secretary, Suella can order the Metropolitan Police Commissioner um, to do things. There's, there's grown up a culture um, a belief that, oh, well, actually operational independence is for the police. And th that too, that is, I want your viewers to know that that is a political position. Okay? That's not, that's not, it's not required by law. And it, 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 there's no fundamental, even if, even if we were, even if there were one line in a statute somewhere saying, you know, the Met Police are, in, are, are um, operationally independent. Well, you just get rid of that line. There's no fundamental principle that the police are independent. And in the past, home secretaries were much more muscular uh, with police forces and told them to, to do, their, do their job. And um, I think that approach could, could be taken by the home secretary, although she'd have to run it past her cabinet colleagues because they have collective cabinet responsibility. But if, if uh, Suella Bellman and the prime minister found that both the commissioner for the Met and the police and crime commissioner, Sadiq Khan, weren't taking action, then they could start a parliamentary ball rolling to get this march banned, to change the act, and, and I either change it so that it's her decision or the prime minister's decision, or to delete the current way you ban marches and invent a new way to ban marches and shape it entirely how you want. Get that through the House of Commons with the majority that they hold, and then force that through the Lords, which, and there are mechanisms for forcing things through the Lords. And although, you know, there might be squeaking, um, that that is possible. There is no, there is no, there is no absolute that would stop it. Everything is possible if the public want it done. And that means that the real power is with the public. And that's what a democracy 
is. There is a very serious threat to public safety. Very serious. We've already had a march on Saturday where there were very serious incidents that go well beyond, in my opinion, go well beyond any sort of uh, legal threshold. This is a march which can be banned if people want it banned. The right to protest as it is enshrined in law today is not absolute. And it's very far from absolute. So in order to, to make their political position true, they'd have to change the law. At the moment, it's legally untrue to say that the right to protest is absolute. You can believe it. I mean, I can believe that the moon is made of cheese. It's not going to mean that the moon is made of cheese. You know, that it is, it is that simple. And the right to protest, as it is currently structured in law, is very far from absolute. It's been very far from absolute um, for the entirety of uh, our relationship with the right to protest in the UK. And I think what a lot of people don't know um, in the UK, the people who do believe in sort of absolute free, free speech, is that we're actually far more restrictive and always have been, you know, for hundreds of years, been far more restrictive than somewhere like the United States, which is a very, very, very permissive free speech regime. And we're just not anywhere near as permissive as they are. Um, again, if people want to make the right to protest absolute, and provided they can convince enough others and win a democratic election, and provided they can wield this giant forge that is Parliament, then they could make the, the right to protest absolute. And I have no comment to say on that because that's a political position. If the march does go ahead, it will go ahead because there is a political will for the march to go ahead. And it's not really for me to comment on that. But I mean, the the there are clearly a, there is a divide between the Met Commissioner and Sadiq Khan on one side and Suella Braverman and the Prime Minister on the, on, on the other. So for, if, if the march goes ahead, it will have been because of political calculations by those four in relation broadly to what the, what the public think and the public want, and that, that will, will itself play a role. If the march does go ahead, I think it's incumbent on me to make it very clear to your viewers that, again, there are a very large number of existing laws to police that march. It's fair to say that on the last previous Saturday, we didn't necessarily see the police using those powers, but those powers exist. And provided there is a will to use those powers, if the march goes ahead, it can be very heavily policed. And a lot of uh, what we have seen is not lawful behavior. And if it repeats, then the police could do mass arrests and, and intervene. Whether they will or not is, again, um, that's just political will. So I can't call for anybody um, to, to, to use those powers. I can just reassure the public that they exist. And I think it's fair to say that there has been a bit of an oddity there because the Met Commissioner did make public statements uh, saying that the laws didn't exist and probably the best way for me to describe that is unhelpful. These, little, these legal powers to police the march definitely exist. We can be a rule of law country if we want to be.